Welcome to our K-Swapped S14 versus SR20 S15 drag race. If you guys have been following our K-Swapped S14, then you will know that it's already got a K24 under the hood, and we recently did some upgrades on it to add a bit of power. So we did some drag cartel cams, a Kamiata intake manifold, bigger throttle body, and tuning by Nick gave it a tune on the Honda, and it made 236 at the wheel on what was probably the hottest day of the year. So it's a little bit cooler, although it's still pretty humid here, but I think we could round it up to a 240 number and say that's a pretty realistic number for today. And we looked for a SR20 DET powered S14 to put up against it that make about the same power to see how they would how they would fare on the drag strip. And we're actually going to take this car over to the road course a bit later, which is really what this car is built for, so we can show you how it does for oil pressures and all that. So stay tuned for that. But we figured we'd start it off with something a little bit fun and unusual. And since we couldn't find an S14 with an SR20 in it to go up against this car, we figured why not bring out Pete's new S15. And by new, I mean high mileage, recently imported from Japan, and bone bone stock, other than it has had a, a small mod done to its boost solenoid. It's a restrictor that's been removed, so it might make an extra pound or two of boost. And driving it on the way up here, it actually feels really healthy, even though it's a high mileage car. Pretty sure it was like all highway miles, because the car feels really solid. It feels like it's making good power, so it's really torquey in the mid-range, so I feel like it's got a, probably a mid-range torque advantage over the K24, but this guy's obviously going to have a lot more top end, so uh, this may be a little bit like our 2J M3 versus Supra battle. We've got a top end car versus a torque car, and uh, let's see which one comes out on the uh, which see which. Let's see which one comes out on top. All right, everyone, welcome to the interior of our S15. This is an R spec model, and it is on a Goodyear summer tire. It's actually a pretty good summer tire. So, and this track is very well prepped. So I don't think there's really going to be a big differential on tires. Pete's on an R triple eight R, which is a, obviously a track tire, not really a drag race tire. This, like I said, we're not going to have tires spinning here because A, these aren't super powerful cars and the track's so well prepped we should be fine. So I don't think there's really any anything between the cars on that. We're going to do this just as our usual uh, heads up race, no timing system on. So it's just going to be who gets to the finish line first. I'm going to honk three times. We're going to send it and uh, we'll see what kind of gap Pete can pull on me because let's face it, he's making like say 240 at the wheel. This should only be making maybe 180, 190 at the wheel. And uh, I'm shifting with my left hand. So <laughs> here we go, everybody. Oh, I bogged again. I chirp second gear. He's pulling on me pretty good though. But I got a shitty launch there. Sorry, SR20 boys. I got a terrible, terrible launch there. Yes! Oh, short shifted, totally goofed! That went so badly. I don't know what I, I was not driving. Thought I was driving a diesel truck there. Wow. Just for fun here, we'll see what uh, what Dave comes up with. I could barely hear him honking, so I'm gonna rev this thing up again. I, I felt like I got a pretty good launch off the other one. We're gonna see. Oh yeah! Yeah, this thing's got some top end, baby. Woo! Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. There we go. We're closer this time, but he is top ending me. Still, we're hanging pretty good. to be expected. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to beat you there, but I'm kind of impressed by this car, to be honest. I know, I'm telling you, I've that SR is not bad. Guy, but it's yeah, pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I, I obviously I messed up my first launch, because that's what I do every time we come drag racing, and then uh, on the second one, I got a good launch, and I think maybe your launch wasn't as good, because I yeah, pulled out a, like couple, a bit of a Yeah, there. there's a couple that I, there was one that I short shifted. I don't know what happened in my brain. I, I, I think I was thought I was driving a diesel truck, <laughs> and I shifted at like 6,000 RPM rather than eight yeah. from the one-two. Give me a chance, I yeah, like it. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. You, even when you got off to a little bit, 
it would pick up and this car is just the torque is just so flat on it it's yeah. amazing it doesn't feel like it doesn't have any power with a k20 for example if you drop under 4,000 rpm it feels kind of like ugh, yeah. slow and just doesn't have the torque where this thing man like i launched a 3500 rpm and it would pick up right away i was mm -hmm. i, I kind of felt that power band so it was nice and the top end is nice on this thing so. yeah from my seat the top end is what really shines in that car as you get to the top of each gear you really pull yeah that yeah gap. i've got that like, extra thousand rpm because yeah. i'm shifting at, at around eight thousand mm -hmm. yeah so, i thought maybe at first you had shorter gears but maybe it's just the rpm difference that's, yeah that's doing that but it i mean it's not a drag car obviously no no it's just cool to see like you know if we maybe put a boost controller on this thing uh a, an intercooler and an exhaust system it might keep up be so pretty close I yeah think. It, it would be pretty close but that's how it always goes you can always b uh, bench race and, and figure out which one is going to be faster by adding parts and whatnot but from a, a stock perspective I'm impressed. Like we built an NA K24 here, yeah, and it beats up on a stock SR20, and that was always my kind of idea. Where you know, stock for for somewhat stock, yeah, you could build a, a K24 and I think reel in a, an SR20. And now we've got so much potential. Exactly. I mean, the aftermarket for the K is massive. It put a put a turbo on there, put oh, a supercharger on there. It really disguised that. the limit yeah. if you wanted to do that. Yeah. And yeah. I think really our logic at the time was SR20s are getting hard to find. Yep. yep. They're old greasy motors that are expensive now. This is a five thousand dollar Canadian yeah. swap if you want to buy it from a JDM importer. Like it's expensive. It is. And that motor we paid like nine hundred bucks for. Nine hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Two hundred dollars for the gearbox. Like you know, obviously the adapters and one on labor's high, but mm. dollar for dollar, you're you're probably pretty close there. And once it's in there, obviously there's some upfront cost. But once it's yeah. in there, you blow that motor up, oh and goodness. for another 900 bucks, you throw yeah. another and one in there. And you can just so. continue to upgrade. Where with the SR, I feel like you need to build a motor mm -hmm. if you want to, you know, push some serious power over this thing to make 500 at the wheel. You could do that on a stock block, it's, which is crazy. Still blows my mind. Which is absolutely crazy. So, anyways, it is time for the roll races, which uh, should be no surprise either. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to get this going here. Second gear. One, two, three, go! Oh man, slowly pulling away! It's got that top end! Nice, nice, nice! Wow, yeah! That's a nice pull there, yes! It's all top end in this car! shorter gears than me eh you can really hear them shifting over there but again sr20 hanging tough ish but wow he's starting to gap me pretty good now that's a good five six car length so yeah <laughs> gears what an advantage that is he's also got top end for days look at that dirty dog go he is pulling some links on me now once we really get into the top end of third and fourth he really pulls a nice gap there that's i don't know five or six car lengths at a minimum well not too surprising again but i thought with this car you know being in second gear in boost maybe it would give you a bit more of a tussle and i think in the first gear and you know part way through third it was it does, maybe a little yeah, bit more neck yeah, and neck. certainly but again, once you get into the top end of this thing, yeah, it does start to gap starts, you. And by the time you're into fourth, you're like five, six, seven car lengths ahead of me, and it's just going like a train. Yeah. And by the way, I know in the past I've said K-Series, not a great sounding motor, but on the drag strip, this thing sounds <laughs> really good, actually. Really good. I, I was complaining. I couldn't hear you honk, yeah, first of all. It's yeah. just, it's so loud in there. But yeah, you know what? You kind of get used to that sound pretty quickly. Well, I mean, it's windows still 2JZ, but yeah. Car, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's so. the way to experience a K is exactly. window up in someone else's car. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, like uh, SR20 impressed me again. Yeah. You know what? Like yeah. it's, it's not that bad. 
uh, top end comes through. So really there's not much else to say. This car is pretty awesome in that sense. So let's hit the drag, uh, or sorry, the track, because that's really what we built this car for. That's right, we gotta see if we've got consistent oil pressure. Yep. And we wanna see if it goes faster than it did before. Well, this should be fun, everybody. It's been a while since I've driven this car. I've only driven it really once before, which was here at TMP on the road course, back before we did all these power upgrades and before we've uh, changed out the brake system and added a bigger rear sway bar. So made a lot of changes. I think if memory serves, I did a 120 flat in the old setup, uh, maybe a 120.1. I don't know for sure, but we'll throw the correct lap time up on the screen right now so you know. And uh, you know, obviously we're gonna wanna go faster than that today. Although it's hard to know if the car will go faster just based on track conditions. These, these tires are a year older. I should mention these are a 255-35-18 Toyo R888R. And uh, having sat around at the shop on them for a, a year, or has it been two years? I don't even remember, but it's been at least a year. So they've aged, you know, our compounds don't especially age well. Um, so I'm making all the racer excuses now before, uh, I don't go faster than 120 flat, or if I do, then great. That's obviously the objective with a car like this is to go faster. I also have to familiarize myself with the Cooler Works shifter here, which is very different than the stock shifter, which was really low and kind of slushy. This is up high, very precise and high effort. So it's gonna take a few laps to kind of familiarize myself with the car here. So uh, bear with me while I go and rip some tech here and uh, just give the car a good shake see how the handling balance feels, see how these new brakes feel, and uh, just get accustomed with the shifting. everyone first of all I should say sorry but we're in the middle of a windstorm so if there's some wind noise here we apologize but as far as the S14 goes wow what a difference power makes it feels a lot stronger than it did before and unfortunately I didn't feel like I could extract all of that potential from it yet because I'm still fighting some ergonomic problems and I actually just reviewed the video from the last time we did a track test in this car and first of all it was way cooler out I was wearing a hoodie and a jacket over my hoodie so it was late fall cooler temps which may explain why I did a 121.7 in this car prior to today. So I thought it was like a 120 flat. I was wrong. It was a 121.7. And I kind of set myself up psychologically for disappointment today because I was chasing that time and really struggling to get there because the car still does have a bit of understeer. It's way better than it was before though. And I think with some other small changes, we could get it completely gone. I did get a little bit of oversteer in a couple places today. So at least we moved that in the right direction. 
As for those core four motorsports brakes, wow, do we ever have a lot of braking power? And I think there's zero chance that we're ever going to overheat these brakes. Those Hawk DTC 70s in the front, DTC 60s in the rear have a ton of bite, maybe too much bite because the pedal is so firm and has such little travel that it was really easy to lock the brakes up. But as far as like confidence in the stopping power goes now, I mean, you're never going to need more stopping power than this. It, it's an awesome setup that way. I think we just have to do a bit of fine tuning with, you know, the pedal adjustments and maybe with the pad compounds. But this thing is a bulletproof braking machine now, so at least we made a big step in the right direction there. Uh, the other issue I had is the shifter is just really high effort, so I'm just not used to having to put so much like oomph into my shifts. So I, I think I was losing time with that as well, but again, that's just like a familiarity, a familiarity thing, you know, spend some time with it, and I think I would, I would kind of iron that out. So in any case, we're running out of time here, and this storm looks like it's blowing in fast, so what I will say is I did go faster than a 121.7, thank the lords. I got down to a 120.6, so we went 1.1 seconds quicker, which is, I think, attributed almost entirely to the power and the brakes having a lot more uh, trustability, even though the pedals are not great. At least I could get the stopping power I wanted. I could lock the brakes, brakes up very easily, in fact. So you'd have to be quite careful of that. And I did lock the rears up, I think, before the fronts a few times. So we may think about bias adjustments. In any case, we are moving in the right direction here, people, but we got to get out of here before we get wet. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.